like to say uh, hello and welcome to the Schaeferts and Dean Business Builder Speaker Series. Uh, we hold these the third Wednesday every month at 1 p.m. And it's an opportunity for our firm to partner uh, with experts in our field to deliver good information, good content uh, to be helpful to the real estate agent community that we serve. Uh, I know you're busy and I appreciate you giving us your time today. This class will run, uh, or this session will run about an hour, give or take. However, um, wordy uh, Lisa feels today. Uh, it's not approved for CE credits. It's a one hour lunch and learn, but I know you'll enjoy the content and have a good time with us. Uh, to make the most of your time, we encourage you to ask questions and participate utilizing the chat box. And I'll help facilitate and uh, um, moderate the class while uh, Lisa gives us the instruction. Uh, in the way of introductions, my name is Doug Dean. I'm the owner and managing partner at Schaeferitz and Dean. And we started these series right about two years ago uh, when the pandemic first broke out because we wanted to stay in touch with agents. We wanted to do something by Zoom and provide some content. And this was the format we came up with. Uh, we will record the session today and make it available on our YouTube channel. So if you later say, I'd like to go back and recall what we spoke about, you'll have the opportunity to watch the replay of the uh, session today. Before I introduce Lisa, I'd like to tell you to mark your calendars for next month. Uh, next uh, Wednesday, or excuse me, Wednesday, August 17th at one o'clock, we'll have Hutch Marone. He's gonna talk about using technology to leverage your business. He calls it printing money with your sphere, how to make more money in less time using touches that matter. So join us the third Wednesday in August at one for Hutch Maroon. And without uh, further ado, I'm pleased to introduce Lisa Ward. Lisa is the Director of Operations for Premier Atlanta, a certified home staging professional and the owner and CEO of Premier Design and Remodel. And Lisa is going to talk about the importance of staging for a maximum value sale. Lisa, welcome and thanks for joining us today. Um, I'm going to turn it over to you and uh, make you a present uh, host so that you'll be able to share your screen. Go ahead, Lisa. Thank you. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Doug. Um, I'm going to uh, be doing a kind of a slideshow presentation. A lot of what we're going to be talking about today is mostly visual that I want you to see. Um, so I'm going to start sharing my screen. Well, before we begin, we really do want to thank you, Doug and Schaeferts and Dean for asking us to be your guest speakers today. We're honored to be able to share with everyone what we've done to build um, a division of our brokerage that helps sellers to make the most out of the sale of their home. Um, so basically just to tell you a little bit about who we are, um, Ryan and I are the co-owners of our brokerage, Premier Atlanta Real Estate. Ryan is the broker and I am a licensed realtor as well as an accredited stager and designer. Um, I wear a couple of hats in our brokerage. I also act as operations manager for the brokerages and our offices are located in the Alpharetta Roswell area. Um, Ryan and I started basically flipping our own home in downtown Alpharetta about six years ago. Um, we had bought a little ranch and we'd been renovating it for a couple months and decided that with the booming downtown Alpharetta business that we were going to go ahead and sell it. Um, so I just started making lots of improvements to the house, renovating it, getting it ready to sell. Um, and we sold the house, we made a whole lot of money off of it, and the experience of just getting it ready really just opened my eyes to, you know, what it was that I really liked doing. Um, when we bought our new house, we immediately started renovating that house as well. And as, you know, guests and family came into the house and they would say, oh my gosh, you did this yourself. You did this yourself. I can't imagine doing this. Um, and I would explain to them, you know, it's not really that huge deal. It's not a lot of money to do this. I realized my calling would be to um, help sellers to get their home ready to sell without spending a lot of money. So initially I just became a stager and I started doing staging consultations. 
um, for all of the agents on our team and at our brokerage. Um, then, um, this is where Ryan kind of came in. Um, he was speaking to more and more sellers who wanted to make the maximum dollar on the sale of their home. And so we quickly realized this was a service that we could provide. Um, we needed to just convince one seller to let us come in and not only get staging advice, but renovation guidance. And we could increase their profits for those sellers exponentially. Um, most average homeowners don't follow today's styles and trends, and most homes are not move-in ready with those same styles and trends. And getting the home there is very overwhelming for a seller. Um, they're just your average accountant or computer programmer or whatever. So they don't really understand what all it means. Um, so we managed to actually make a presentation to a seller whose home was quite out of date. Um, it was in a state of extreme disrepair, um, but he agreed to kind of let us take the reins and make this our first home project. Um, the picture you see here of this bathroom is actually the bathroom of that, that home. It's the after picture. Um, so our first project um, literally was what we call a gut job. Um, we almost gutted this whole house. It was a huge venture for our first project, but the owner trusted us completely. Um, in order to use this project to build the business, we documented it every step of the way. Eventually we did a three part video series showing the process from beginning to end as to how we did all of this. Um, we started by giving the owner an as is list price. This is the price that we would get, list your house for if you did absolutely nothing to it. Then after finding contractors and getting quotes and presenting the budget to the owner, once we settled on a budget that was approved by that owner, we then gave them the after renovations list price. Um, for this project, the owner would receive his investment back plus a proposed additional $30,000 return. Um, and so we told him, let us do all the work and all you have to do is write the checks. Um, this project was supposed to take about four weeks, as most projects go. We found lots of problems and ended up taking about six weeks. But mind you, this was a whole house. Um, and usually we can update just a kitchen or a bathroom or an exterior or something, some kind of combo of those and, and get it done in about three to four weeks um, to get the house ready for put on the market. So I went shopping. I did all of the design elements and decided on all of the color palettes, the finishes, the surfaces, all aspects of the beauty of the home. I also managed all of the contractors, essentially being a project manager and designer. And so all the decisions and changes went through me. Um, once this project was finished, the homeowner thought that it was so amazing that he wanted to list it for higher than what we had recommended he list it for. And though we were scared, we went along with him and we actually ended up getting multiple offers and full price. Now, keep in mind, this was our first project. It was about two and a half years ago. This was way before the crazy sellers market. So to get this many showings and offers on a property was kind of like, you know, it was like a big deal. Um, and so that's how we basically got started to say, you know, this is something that we can do for any and every seller who wants to make the maximum profit on the sale of their home, but they just don't know how. So what are our keys to success? I make sure to follow all of the trends. I watch every HGTV show there is. I'm a member of countless design and decor and renovation social media groups. I'm a licensed realtor, so I see what's being listed and what's selling and what's not. I stay on top of what's new and now because that's what will maximize the return on the investment. Having now done over 25 projects, I've formed relationships with many contractors and vendors who I've partnered with to make sure that we get maximum value and commitment from them. We do lots of business together, so they know how to treat me right. I make sure that they, they know, if you want the next job from me, you're gonna do a great job on this one first. Um, finding a good contractor, or service is one of the hardest parts of a renovation for a homeowner. And so all of my people, all of my people that I've partnered with share that proven track record with me. And so now that I have that proven track record of success, I can maximize the sales price of a home guaranteed. 
Um, and I just wanted to talk about some examples of what I can do and how I have helped sellers. So let's talk about budgets. Um, each project is different and sometimes an update can require a, you know, a little more than others. We've done houses where the homeowner spent only about $10,000 on the investment in their home. And we've done projects where we've spent $40,000. Um, when I walk through the, pro the project, um, I make sure to look at what will give us the most return for the investment. So obviously kitchens and bathrooms are usually the most important, but a lot of times it can be just some paint or some new flooring, um, replacing light fixtures and hardware. Sometimes we do it all, um, but I do want to show you some examples of what each individual budget can do. Okay, this was a pretty small project of nice cute little house in Woodstock. This home only needed a few cosmetic updates. We did a full interior paint. We painted some kitchen cabinets. Um, uh, these kitchen cabinets originally were two-tone. The interior part here was, if you can see my um, cursor, was gray and then the exterior was white. It's kind of crazy. So we painted them solid white. Um, they did not have matching appliances, so we made sure that we matched all the appliances. Um, and we replaced the master bathroom flooring, painted the cabinets, replaced some counters with granite, replaced some faucets, and updated the shower. Um, the as is list price that the listing agent that was on our team suggested for this house was three hundred and sixty thousand um, dollars. The investment that they put in was the I can't even see that. Sorry, I don't need to remove this. Um, after renovations list price was three ninety, and their final sales price was four hundred and ten thousand dollars. So their after investment return profit was forty thousand dollars. That was the profit they put in their pocket after they also received their investment back. This was a ten thousand um, dollar. So I wanted to show you specifically something we did in that Woodstock house was this shower. So most people think that they've got to rip out these old showers and put in new tile showers. And that's a great idea for some houses, but for some houses, we don't have the budget for that. $5,000 would be what it would cost to rip this shower out and retile it with something new. All we did on this shower was we reglazed this shower for $350. Then we added a frameless shower door, which was $1,000. And so the total investment to make this shower look brand new was $1,350, which is way better than $5,000. And we can do this on tile or on your, um, like the fiberglass prefab kind of showers or, you know, whatever. It's a great kind of workaround to save money, but to still make it look like it's new to the buyer. Okay, so here's a Marietta Ranch house um, where this home was all original from 1979. The bathrooms had been updated, but nothing else in the house had been touched for over 30 years. So we did a full exterior update, including Removing shrubs, if you'll notice this shrub here, completely blocked the front door. And we took that out so that we could have some really nice curb appeal and make this front door an accent piece to the home. We removed the shutters um, and simply painted the trim a nice dark color that would really draw you to those beautiful front windows. And we did have to replace the back deck on this house. On the inside, we reconfigured the appliances, adding more counter space, and we replaced the flooring, added granite counters, tile backsplash, a new sink and faucet, new light fixtures, and a full interior paint. We also updated the stone fireplace and added all new appliances. So as you see, this as is list price was $325, and after their investment, we listed it for $375. The final sales price on this house was $400,000. So their after investment return, after they got all of their investment money back, was an additional $45,000, um, basically for just letting us do this project. So for this project, I wanted to kind of show you this kitchen before and after. So this was, like I said, the original kitchen with the avocado green appliances from 1970 something. Now a new kitchen, if a buyer walked in here, they would say to themselves, oh my gosh, this is $40,000 to rip this out and start anew. I cannot do that. 
So I have to help this seller be able to make this kitchen like new um, so that the seller, so that the buyer thinks that they don't have to do anything to the kitchen. Um, what we did was we painted the cabinets. We actually reconfigured the cabinets. So if you look right here, there's a wall oven and then there is a um, cooktop. And if you look in the after picture, we now just have a range where we ripped out those cabinets and we ripped out these this um, wall oven. And we also added the microwave. We shortened these cabinets. If you notice, the cabinets are longer here, but we shortened these cabinets to make room for the microwave. And where we came up with more space here, we added open shelving, which makes it up to today's thousand trends. A house with open shelving in it looks new and trendy. Um, we also added this really nice pattern backsplash because it didn't have one before. And at this price point of 375, we didn't feel like quartz was a good investment, but we did put an upgraded granite. This is a leather granite, so it has a texture to it and it doesn't have a shine. Um, and so when you look at the before and after, you would think, oh my gosh, they spent a lot of money. Keep in mind the total budget for this entire house, which included exterior paint, interior paint and all that was only like $30,000. Um, so here's another view of the same kitchen where they had the vinyl floors, the rolled vinyl floors, and we put in luxury vinyl tile, which is just like a luxury vinyl plank. It looks like a tile you would put in a kitchen and it goes right over that existing floor. We didn't have to do any demo on that floor. Um, and with some paint and some new light fixtures and um, putting some new hardware on there. And like I said, reconfiguring all of the cabinets, um, it looks like night and day. And this house sold, like I said, with, I don't know, I mean, 10, 10 offers or something, um, well over list price. Okay. This is an Alpharetta traditional brick home. It was owned by a widower who had basically just let the property go. It needed a lot of love. Um, it was a pretty large home in a sought after neighborhood in Alpharetta. And so we did a full exterior update. Um, this house had a lot of wood rot repair. Uh, it needed new deck stain. It needed lots of landscaping work and we took out lots of trees and bushes. Um, inside we did a full interior paint. We painted some cabinets and replaced the backsplash. We replaced many of the ceiling fans and light fixtures and we also did what's called a screen and coat to update the hardwood floors where we didn't have the budget to completely refinish the floors but if you do a screen and coat it's like you're taking the first layer off and just updating it with a new finish. And um, we did refinish the hardwood on the stairs. So the as is list price on this house was 550. Um, the after renovation list price was 625. Now you're like, that's, that's a big difference there. Well, we based this as is list price on a house literally right down the street that was on the market at the exact same time, also for 550. Um, and so after this investment, we listed it for six twenty-five. dollars The final sales price on this house was $748,000. So an after investment return of $168,000. Um, now, this was in the height of the huge, you know, um, 80 showings on a house um, back in, I think, March or April when we sold this house. Um, but again, we sold this house for a hundred and twenty some odd thousand dollars over list price. I guarantee you, if we'd have left it as is, we definitely would not have gotten as many offers as we did. So on this house, I wanted to show you the before and after on the importance of landscaping. So this tree bush thing, I think it started out maybe being a decorative bush and it just was never ma maintained. Um, it was covering up the entire corner of the house and it caused the entire corner of the house to have wood rot. Um, and so we took the bush down and immediately, as you see, it opens up the front of the house so that we can actually see the whole house and the size of the house. Um, and if you go back, like the house is very beautiful and grand and when you see it, but if you would have seen it with this big tree in front of it, you would not have thought that it was so grand. And inside the same house, this is an example of a backsplash replacement. 
So this homeowner, they had updated their kitchen. They had put in new cabinets and the cabinets were gorgeous. But this island here was red. They had painted it red. And so they had coordinated this backsplash with it, which for a homeowner, what makes them happy makes them happy. But when we're trying to make this house appeal to a huge pool of buyers to offer the most amount of money, um, we can't be so specific in design. And to have a red um, island and this kind of rainbow backsplash is very specific. So we decided to paint this white so that there was contrast between the brown cabinets and the white cabinet. And then we replaced the backsplash with this really pretty kind of neutral backsplash with a really dark brow to give it a nice contrast to match these black counters. Um, it was a minimal investment to transform that kitchen um, into something that was really like a chef's dream. Okay, so how does all this help you, the real estate agent? So customer service is key. When you can increase your seller's profits on the sale of their home, they'll of course be very appreciative. Um, most jobs that I do take an average of three weeks. So let's say we do a three week reno and then it takes a week to get the house photographed and marketed. Um, and all of my projects have gone under contract in less than five days. Um, so if it takes about 30 days on average to close, this is a 60 day turnaround. So your client will make an investment and double, triple, or even more that investment in 60 days. Um, I don't think there's any other investment in the world that you can do that gives you that high of a rate of return in that little time. Um, also, the increase in the sales price increases your commission, of course. Um, and when you've been the source of such a value to a client, they will not forget you and they will give you repeat business and they'll give you referrals from it. Um, and I also want to stress every project that I have done has sold in less than five days. I get we've been in a seller's market, but updated homes sell faster. There's definitely no question about that. So I just wanted to give you some more examples. Before and after pictures are always super fun. So this house again was strictly curb appeal. This tree here, when this house was built, was probably about you know this big. It was a little decorative tree that was planted by the builder that was never meant to get this big. And when they never really did anything with the tree, it just outgrew the home. And so when we're looking at this house, it was a very large house. But with this tree in front of it, it looked almost half the size, like the entire side of the house and all those beautiful windows were just covered. So I think we spent about $750 and we took the tree down and the curb appeal and just your front photo of that, you know, is every listing that front photo is just the beautiful view of the house was completely transformed. Here's another before and after of the kitchen we did. Now this was a super simple kitchen redo. Um, all we did here was paint the cabinets, replace the appliances with new stainless steel appliances. We added a backsplash because there was not an existing backsplash. Um, and then of course we replaced, replaced the hardware and the sink and the faucets and the light fixture. So just your basic simple stuff. Um, I wanna say this entire kitchen renovation cost maybe $8,000 max. And yes, I did paint these cabinets green. They were pretty. The listing agent, she's gonna kill me. She, um, if she's watching this, but she was very nervous that I had the courage to paint these cabinets green. But um, she did get multiple offers within like 24 to 48 hours on this um, house. So um, this was just a simple, this literally took about a week, a week and a half to do. All right, this is a kitchen that I actually recently did. I will tell you, this was not a seller. This was a um, just a client who wanted me to redo their kitchen, but I did want to point out some of the things that we did here that we did on another. Notice this is a wall unit on a 1970 something kitchen. So the size of this wall unit, they do not make wall ovens in the size that they used to make them 20, 30 years ago, 30. 35 years ago. So it's almost impossible 
to replace that. So we have to come up with some idea to figure that out. So again, we created more counter space here by taking that all out and putting in some open shelving. And then we reconfigured this to give them a really cool trendy under counter microwave. Notice their microwave was here before. This client really wanted a decorative um, vent hood. So we made a cabinet cubby for their microwave here, made extra counter space by taking that wall unit out and just putting in a slide in range. And so we were able to kind of convert this into a really beautiful functional kitchen um, by reconfiguring that. Okay, so the before and after on this, what I really want you to focus on is this island, okay? So in this kitchen, of course, we replaced some hardware, we replaced the backsplash, we replaced the sink. But more importantly, what we did here is we cut down this island. And to cut down this island is actually a minimum investment. They simply go in and they just chop it, right? And then when we have it measured for the new quartz countertops, this countertop is the same size as the existing countertop. But because it now becomes one level, it feels three times as big. It's actually more usable space because these high ledge counters ultimately end up with just your mail on them. They're not usable space for cooking in a kitchen. So by cutting this island down and then making it one big, huge surface space, we not only create more of an open concept than it was, but we create more usable kitchen space that it didn't have before. This is a laundry room that we redid. Um, and the way I want to point this out is that laundry rooms are... You know, we can make them beautiful if you want, but it's still a laundry room. So how can we go in and transform this awful laundry room, which actually was, a, if you, these cabinets are familiar to you because they're the same house that I just showed you in the kitchen. Um, but how can we convert this laundry room without spending a lot of money? Well, I suggested that we put butcher block countertops in this laundry room to save us some money from getting any kind of granite or quartz. And we just pulled the carpet up and laid some LVT and we just painted these cabinets, whereas in the kitchen, we actually got new cabinet doors. We just painted these. And so now this laundry room has been transformed into a space where whoever's doing the laundry is loving their space. But it was it was I mean, literally this whole room cost about a thousand dollars to do. So this is my new favorite thing to do in the house is fireplace updates. So the trend to paint a brick fireplace started a long time ago where we started painting the brick fireplaces white. And I, I think we painted our fireplace white in the house that we flipped in downtown Alpharetta. It was actually beautiful. But then they started a trend of painting these beautiful stone fireplaces white. Well, once you paint these white, you cannot go back. You cannot strip that paint off and have that beautiful stone show again. And a beautiful stone fireplace like this is much more of a feature than a, just a basic brick fireplace. So how can we update these stone fireplaces without painting them and ruining the look of the stone? Well, this is simply just a whitewash. Um, you basically take grout, and cover over the old mortar and brighten it up and freshen it up. And then you kind of wipe it down. And then the difference is amazing in the update. This fireplace is actually my own personal fireplace that I love. I've done this in, um, in seller's homes and we can do it where it's lighter or, or more white or however we want to do it. But it's a great inexpensive way to update a fireplace without actually painting it and taking away the whole look of that beautiful stone. Okay, feature walls. Feature walls are a fantastic way to add something special and valuable to a home when you're trying to sell it that doesn't cost a lot of money. This is a, called a board and batten wall. This is a geometric wall. We can also do just an accent paint color or, a, oops, sorry or a wallpaper wall. I will tell you that this wall here, this white board and batten wall, in this house, this was a house that was a seller's house that we redid for them. 
and the and the homeowner um, had turned this dining room. So most of you know how a floor plan works. When you walk into a five floor in a door, you walk in and you have a formal living room on one side and you have a dining room on the other side with just a huge cased opening. It's not really closed off. So this is how this dining room was set up. And the owner had actually set up a home office in there and put built in um, desks in there. They were built into this wall. Um, and so when we were talking about what we wanted to do to get it ready to sell, to appeal to the most amount of buyers, immediately, the first thing is it doesn't have a dining room anymore. And I get the need of a home office, but this room is, is, open with a huge cased opening and it also connects directly to the kitchen. This is not really what a sought after office would look like. We should probably put an office in another room. So we need to convert this back to a dining room. So when we demoed all of that built-in desk furniture that was there, instead of just repairing the drywall and just making it simple, we added this accent wall for a very small investment. And you see that when you first walk in the door and this is the first thing you see, it automatically makes the house seem like it's just a little more nice and ornate and upgraded than a simple wall. This geometric wall is actually, um, when we opened our offices, I was trying to think of a cool way to add a feature wall into our conference room. And this is what I came up with. And it's beautiful. And it's very simple to do this in, in any kind of room where an accent wall would just add a little bit of kind of oomph to the house. So staging. Um, staging is super important when we're trying to sell a house. And I just wanted to point out a couple of things that um, we can do to help make a house feel a little more warm. I never leave built-in bookshelves empty and I never leave them with just the owner's pictures or whatever on them. These are actually some built-in bookshelves that I staged with all of my personal staging stuff. Um, it's just to make it look a little more modern and up-to-date, less personal. Um, bathroom counters are very important, kitchens obviously, and then fireplaces. Just add some depth and warmth to the fireplace by just putting these layers of kind of decor items on there. Um, and it'll help really just bring a nice beauty to the house. Okay, so what makes a move-in ready house with today's styles and trends? Well, neutralization is the key. Um, make sure that what we're selling to the buyer pool is going to appeal to that largest pool of buyers. We can't get too specific. Um, we can't appeal to just that one homeowner who lives there. We have to make the house appeal to as many people as possible. So neutralization is key. Picking a wall color that's going to make sure that it appeals to every buyer. Um, for instance, when the gray phase hit, um, however long ago it hit, I, my own kitchen is gray. Um, but when the gray phase hit, there was a, a pool of people who absolutely loved it and embraced it. And there is a pool of people out there who absolutely hate how stale the gray is. They still like the warmth of colors. So to kind of get around that and make a house appeal to the most amount of buyers, I never paint a house gray. Um, I will pick a grayish color. Grayish is a made up word, gray and beige. Um, and that way, if a buyer comes in and all of their their furniture and they do their core items are still in earth tones it will complement that or if we have a new buyer who loves the grays and whites it'll also look good with that um, so colors are key when we're talking about what to do um, do we go with granite do we go with quartz quartz is the new thing for kitchens it is much more expensive than granite um, for instance the house i showed you a little while back at 375 that sales price did not justify quartz going in there. So we still put granite in there, but we put the upgraded, more neutral granite in there as opposed to the busy granite that um, was really trending in the 90s and 2000s. Um, but quartz is what's in right now and less movement, simpler um, is what is really trending. Most of the um, veining in quartz is gray. 
I've actually talked to my um, stone fabricator that I partner with, and I said, why are you not making, or why whoever makes quartz, not making more with, you know, the earth tones in them? And um, they said that they've been hearing that a lot from people and that they are moving towards adding a more of that um, into the options that you can get for quartz. Woods also. Wood accents in a home are becoming very popular. And the color of wood that is the most desired wood in a home has changed over the years. Um, even two and a half years ago when we did our very first project, I did those floors in a super deep, rich chocolate color because that was what was popular then. Now, this color that is kind of in this example, this very light natural color is what is trending. The last time I redid some floors, which was just a few months ago, I literally stripped the floors down, left them natural, and just put a top coat on them. And it was beautiful. Um, exteriors also are very important. Um, you saw that I had painted uh, two examples that I showed you. Um, we painted the brick white. That has been what is trending for the past few years. I'm noticing that a lot more color and darker colors are um, kind of coming into style for the exteriors, going a little more contemporary, um, a little more just in that mid-century modern kind of contemporary style. I haven't yet been able to do that, but um, I am waiting on my next opportunity to try that dark exterior that I think is so great. Tiles are very important. The bottom picture that I have here is a backsplash tile that I did. I called this um, whimsical. To me, this tile was very whimsical. I don't know if the color is coming through on your screen, but this tile was actually gray and yellow, um, which you're like, wow, what? Um, and so the gray complemented the gray cabinets. And then the little bits of yellow in this, tiny bits of yellow were um, really just added a feature um, to the backsplash. That's not your average subway tile that most people um, who are flipping or renovating houses are, um, are doing. I, I don't think I've ever put a subway tile in a house. If I do put a subway tile in the house, it has some kind of feature or texture to it. My favorite tile to put on a backsplash is the square tile like this. It just changes um, the look of it. And also it's important when you're looking at grouts, um, there are 20 different grout colors that are available and each grout color will change the way a backsplash looks. So it's very important to pick the right color grout to bring out whatever it is you're doing. One of the examples I showed earlier, I pointed out that we used, a, I mean, the darkest gray grout we could find to kind of make the simple white tile really pop and match with those black counters. And then of course, staging like we have talked about. Um, very important to make sure that we have proper staging. Um, you can hire a stager to bring in a full house full of furniture, or you can do simple just decor items, but always make sure the house has some kind of warmth with today's styles and trends. So buyers can either buy a home for, um, sorry, for a low price and renovate it themselves, or they can buy an already renovated home for top dollar. The first option gives the buyer the equity in the home. The second option gives the seller all of the equity in the home. And it's a lot easier for a buyer to finance the higher price in their mortgage payment um, than to come out of pocket with cash to renovate a home after they bought it. So offering this service is really a win-win for everyone. And so this is what makes a move-in ready um, today's style and trends home with tons of equity for the seller. Okay, and, and that's really it. Um, I kind of motored through that pretty fast, but that's really it. That's what we do. We've had a proven record of success with our sellers. We started doing this with just sellers that were with our own agents that worked for us at our brokerage. And we were so successful with it. And we've gotten so many referrals that we have actually opened Premier Design and Remodel as its own standalone company who can do this service for anybody. And so if you as a real estate agent um, have a seller that is 
you know, looking to get their house on the market, but it's just not quite updated. And you can see that you can put so much more money in their pocket by simply using our services. Then all it takes is for me to come in and do a free consultation with them and kind of see what we can do and how much we can invest in the house and to put that money in their pocket instead of in the buyer's pocket. And that's it. Lisa, that was fantastic. I really enjoyed uh, getting to uh, see the presentation. I've always enjoyed the home uh, shows, but they always seem kind of distant to me. They're, you know, somewhere else and people I don't know. So seeing homes in Alpharetta and Woodstock and Marietta, making it local and uh, especially, you know, I, I see some of those and it's like, those are great changes, but gosh, that'd be a lot of money and seeing it's possible to do some of these things on a fairly reasonable budget uh, are a couple of the reasons that I particularly enjoyed the presentation today. I'd like to throw the floor open for questions. Uh, this is uh, The questions are what I jokingly call, it's time to stump the professor. <laughs> so um, if you uh, have, any, have any questions, uh, I know Lisa would be glad to, uh, glad to answer anything that any thoughts you have on your mind? Uh, Lisa, uh, there was a question. Uh, what is your contact information or the best way to reach you? And so you my, it, I'll, I'll type it into the uh, chat window for you. Go ahead. Yeah, and if I, my screen's still sharing, at the bottom of the screen is our website and then my phone number to reach me directly, which is 404-247-5543. Sure, and that's premieratlantarealestate.com and that's forward slash premier we are dash, that information. dash remodel. And that phone number is 404-247-5543. Uh, and it's uh, Lisa Ward. And I'm just putting it in the chat so everyone will have it handy. Also, uh, if you ever need to go back and look it up, you can always find this on our YouTube channel. And uh, someone mentioned they might have not seen, it might have been cut off sort of because it's at the bottom of the slide. So I took the contact information from the bottom of the slide, put it in the chat window. Anyone else, any questions? Um, what advice would you give to an agent on how they can talk to a seller that they need to do updates without offending them? <laughs> that is a great question. Um, I will tell you that when I first started doing just staging appointments, so an agent would call me and say, can you go and do a walk and talk with a client to, to get them, you know, to get their house ready? Um, my biggest fear was always, how do I say this without offending them? So how do you do it? You make me the bad guy, right? So it's good cop, bad cop. What you say is, you know what I'd really like to do? I'd really like to get a staging and renovation professional in here to do a consultation with you. I am a realtor. I am great at marketing your home and getting your house ready in, you know, for sale. She is going to be great at giving you the advice on what we need to do to get the house to look the best. And so how would you like it if I make an appointment for her to come in? And then you leave all of that to me. You let me be the bad guy and um, make sure that I'm not offending them. And so that's really not going to be your problem anymore because you have another professional that comes in um, and you're the good cop and I'm the bad cop. I would also throw out that um, if you follow Lisa's suggestion and say there are some things that we might be able to do to maximize the, the sales price of your home, would you be interested in uh, speaking to somebody, no charge introductory consultation on some things that might be done that might uh, allow you to get more for your sale uh, rather than tell them, oh, we're going to take a hit selling it like it is. <laughs> uh, so uh, uh, always pitch things to the positive. I'd, I'd like for you to speak to someone about some things that can be done that might help you get a higher price. Right. And on our website, not only are the three examples that I kind of shared with you today, but we have lots of examples of the before and afters 
the investments, the, the before list price, the after list price, and the profit, the extra profit that the sellers made on our projects, along with testimonials from every single one of those um, sellers as to how the process went for them. Um, and so if you do suggest that we kind of bring me in, you can just share with them my website and, and they can see lots of other sellers who did this and how much extra money they made and how much little time it was. And like I said, their testimonial as to how it all worked. Um, Just passing along, Lisa, some other nice feedback. Wendy said, Lisa has completed a few projects for my clients, and they have really enjoyed working with her. Fabulous work. So thank you, thank Wendy. Thank you, Wendy. Wendy is my agent who I, I um, mortified her and did the green kitchen for. And she was like, I can't believe you're painting this kitchen green. You have way more courage than I do. <laughs> Uh, there was uh, another question about the YouTube channel. Um, we're going to take the uh, video. We're going to add the opening music, the credits, make it look nice and pretty. We'll post it on our YouTube and we'll send everyone a link uh, thanking you for being part of our uh, presentation today. And there'll be a, a link to where you can see the replay on, on the YouTube channel. I did want to mention that on our website is that three part video that we did documenting one of our projects. Um, part one of the video is basically how this starts, how this you know works for a seller. Um, and then part two of the video is the, you know, the demo process and the shopping and the design process. And then part three of the video is the after, every how the house turned out and, and, and everything. It's almost like many HD TV shows. Each video is only like two minutes long, but it does show the whole process and how it works for um, a seller. Another commenter said, great ideas on updating. Thanks for sharing. Thank uh, you. Anyone else, uh, any questions? If not, on behalf of uh, Lisa and uh, Premier Atlanta uh, Real Estate, Premier Design and Remodel, and on behalf of myself, Tracy Wood, and all of us at Shea Fritz and Dean, we'd like to thank you for joining us for our presentation today. One of my favorite quotes that I like to end uh, informational sessions with is a line from the Kenny Rogers song, The Gambler, and that is, I hope you found an ace that you can keep. So uh, I hope you walk away and say, I have uh, taken some value from it. So I hope you found an ace that you can keep Thanks for joining us today, and we will uh, send out a follow-up email. Give us about a week or so to get the, uh, the video edited, posted, but we'll, we'll send you out a, a follow-up email thanking you for being with us and giving, us, uh, giving you the link to go back and see the replay. And, Thank you. Uh, Lisa, special thanks to you for uh, volunteering and sharing your time with us today. We appreciate having you as our special guest for this month. Thank you so much, Doug. All right, everyone. Take care. Have a great day and good luck out there. Go out, sell some homes. And uh, remember, Schaeferts and Dean is help, uh, here to help you as your closing attorney. Uh, we may not have the style, but we've got the substance. <laughs> Thanks again.